Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Mix It at Home. I'm your host, Natalie Diaz, and today we have a very, very talented guest. He is a DC rapper and a songwriter. His name is Ethan Hicks. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate uh, Natalie and Joss at Mix It for giving me this opportunity. Well, we're really excited. He just released his new song, Waking Up, and it's a hit. <laughs> Well, well written and the story and the meaning behind it it's amazing you're about to see so ethan let's start from the beginning tell us a little bit of how you got into music behind the the camera we were talking about this program that you got into when you were younger mm -hmm. so the program is a music program it's called hands on the future and so it's a part of the department of employment services that we have in dc so it's a program that in employs um, young youth, young DC youth all over the city to different work sites so we can make some money throughout the summer. And so the program that I joined was a music program um, that you could, it has many departments within it. And so say if you want to do production work, um, they have a room where they have state-of-the-art production, lighting, um, sound equipment where uh, we have an instructor and they will help you teach you help you work through the mechanics of how the how the you know the machines work um, if you want to be a producer if you want to learn how to engineer we have two state-of-the-art studios with full sound boards uh, midis amps um, microphones where they can teach you how to do the programming and how to really engineer and you know in a professional environment uh, we also have lyricist coaches that um, help you if you've never rapped before, but you've always wanted to, you know, express yourself or really take, you know, the rap seriously. They have lyricist coaches that help you coach you through how to write raps, how to count bars, you know, free, they freestyle every single day so you can continuously build up your skills into, into rapping. I believe like it's a very beautiful experience for all the teenagers um, getting into arts and finding a way to express themselves. I think that's very important. That program's really, you know, it really helped me develop who I am as an artist. And it's really shown me a lot of the um, like resources that I may not have had growing up. But being part of the program, it showed me and it gave me access to a lot of these resources. And I feel like every kid needs that, you know, especially growing up in DC. Like a lot of a lot of children need that, you know. Absolutely, that's amazing. And Ethan was also very inspired by his brother. He was telling me about it that he also like taught to him about music. And now, well, Ethan is releasing his new song. Tell us a little bit about your brother. Wow, so my brother Josh, when he started rapping before me, um, a couple years before me, I wanna say when he was like 13, he wrote his first raps. I, you know, I never really, you know, wanted to express myself creatively like with music at that age. I was always, you know, wanted to draw and wanted to paint, you know, like do things here and there. But then when I got 14 and I really started to take part in the music program, you know, that I talked about, and I seen Josh and I seen how he was and he was performing and everybody was giving him so much, you know, praise for the, you know, the lyrics that he would say. I was like, I, like, I want to enjoy that too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I got to be a part of that. You know, I have to like really see, let me like, let me see where I could go if I take this seriously too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wrote my first song ever when I was like 14. Like, I don't even know, you know, what happened to it. But since then, it's just been uphill from then. I, I started out freestyling first, right? Like I, after I wrote my, my first song, and, you know, a couple little lyrics here and there after that, I would always chill with my friends and I would always try to freestyle. You know, we would p always put on beats and try to, you know, rap and come up with as many like, you know, cooler hit verses as we can. Like, and them sessions would go for like hours, you know, it was hours go back and forth and it would be so fun. And it was like kind of like a competition, right? And so the person who had the best lyrics, you know, we would always be, we'll get the most praise, you know, and just, you know, just keep going back and forth. And, yeah. but I feel like I took it, uh, 
I took it real serious. Yeah. During those freestyle sessions, I really wanted to, you know, to rap is is crazy and spit the craziest bars or like verses that I could possibly, you know, spit. So I just kept freestyling on my own, like outside of me hanging with my friends. I just kept freestyling and freestyling and, and, and looking and paying attention to other rappers at the time. Um, rappers like, you know, Kanye West, that's, you know, one of my favorite artists, paying attention to um, early artists like uh, when Kendrick Lamar stepped out, when he first started, you know, coming into light. Like, I really paid attention to him. But what really got me was um, it's artists like Pac and like artists like Biggie and their lyricism and the way that they're great storytellers. And yeah, so absolutely. that storytelling along with the freestyling helped me really, you know, it helped me form like the songs that I create today. It helped me really see that I want to have a message in every song that I create, you know, like I need my songs have to have a great message behind it because they cared so much about not only their environment, not only their friend, friends, family, but the world. And that showed me and that kind of reflected on me that I have what it takes to really, you know, be diverse with my writing. And yeah. so since like, I want to say 16, 17, I started to really, you know, craft my lyricism and craft my pen. Yeah, and there's a beauty in it, in that ability of telling the stories in a way that people can resonate with them, in a way that people can actually get to know you also, listening to your music. If there was a way that you could change the world or that you could give back to the community, how would you do it? In my experience, um, improving the quality of life of my people, and especially African-American and Black people, it's very important to, you know, have access to better educational and financial opportunities. You know, it's a goal for me to give kids opportunities to flourish, you know, because I know that me coming from a place where I was definitely without, you know, and I would go to school in Northwest DC near Tenley Town and be around a lot of kids who had a lot of opportunities and a lot of resources that I may have not had. And so I would never want any kids in this generation or the next generation to go through that, to go through any of the experience or the pain that I've went through. So that's why it's really important to really give them, you know, better educational and better financial resources in the future. Yeah. So that's what I would really do. And talking about it and spreading the word about how you can give back to your community also inspires others. So that's that's a beautiful thing, man. I, I really admire that, that you want to give back uh, at some point in your career. I truly love my community. Like, like I put my community over myself sometimes. And, um, you know, that's literally the least I could do in a, when I get yeah. to a better position, you know. And we absolutely need more people with that kind heart that wants to give back. Let's talk a little bit about your new song. Sure. This new song is, uh, as I was saying before, it's raw, it's true, it tells a story, a very important and meaningful story. And well, I'm gonna let Ethan tell you about it. Um, how, how was this song um, inspired? Wow, so with the all everything that's been that we have been experiencing in the last few years has been very hectic you know but what has really affected me in particular is the countless um murders and death that has been in my community in the black community in the low income community and not only have we suffered the losses of fathers you know, mothers, brothers, and sisters, we've lost a lot of great artists like X, 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 Tentacion, um, like Pop Smoke, and most important to me personally, Nipsey Hussle, who, you know, I would be, I'm still gonna be affected by his loss, like for my entire life, because he meant so much to me as an artist, you know, not even just as, as an artist, but as a person, you know what I'm saying? And, um, 
having that in mind that made me want to create something. You know, I wanted to create a song, but I didn't know where exactly I would start. But I just felt so enthused to create some body of work, right? So yeah. then um, I had to find the right beat first. So once I found the right beat, um, I took a walk outside my apartment because usually if, when I go by myself and I walk, I'm, that's when I get most of my thinking out. So I just put my headphones in, started blasting the beat over and over and over again. And I, I put it up as high as I possibly could so I could literally visualize what I wanted to say. And so I once I got the flow, um, I started with the first verse. You know, then I got the second verse, then the third verse, and then the fourth verse. And then before I knew it, you know, the song was finally fully written out, you know. And um, for anybody who hears the song, um, um, I didn't really um, want it to go with the with the standard hook. I, I chose to form it like a poem. I constantly bring up the the act of people need to wake up at the end of my um, at the end of every verse. I always say waking up because the scenarios that I talk that I speak through in my verses, they could change. They could totally change and it wouldn't happen if we all would just, you know, just wake up to and, 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 and act in the change that obviously needs to be here, you know. So that's what really helped me develop the entire song. And then once I had it all formed out, I was like, OK, now I got to record it. So then there was only one person I could go to. Like I had to go to Josh, you know, from Mix It because um, and it was my second time going to him. But I knew I couldn't go to anyone else. Like, I just knew he was the person that, to help me record it. And um, I've been so happy ever since. Oh, God. Well, I'm happy you're happy. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Um, you guys, I'm, I'm like, I have no words <laughs> every time, like, I'm going to talk about this song. Um, as you were saying, it's, a, it's a, an amazing way to make people conscious about the reality, you know, and how about people, as you say, need to wake up, you know, and not only um, look at the reality from apart, but also, you know, engage and do something to make a change. Exactly. Because I, I chose to, I didn't want to make it positive, right? I didn't want to make it cheerful or um or lighthearted it had to be it had to be serious you know yeah impactful i wanted to make it as um i wanted to display my true frustration for the world like the frustration that i have for the world i it needed to you know just get out so that's why i chose to you know to put it in that way yeah yeah and since it's so uh, genuine and so true people can also connect to it and uh, that's also a beautiful beautiful opportunity for people also to be to to feel like they are being heard exactly. right to feel like you for example are talking about the truth uh, in a way that it's that it deserves to be talked about in a serious way so that's that's great um, let us please uh, now listen to you singing little bits of the song while you tell us the meaning behind the lyrics. Awesome. Okay. So I got my lyrics uh, right here. So my favorite part of the song for me is um, it's the beginning of my second verse and my last verse. And so the beginning of the second verse, I said, <clears throat> all the heroes losing their fucking capes. Damn, all the villains making their great escapes. Why the hate? It weigh a ton. Y'all the niggas flipping checkerboards. You never won. And so I chose to write that because I wanted to express the hate that a lot of young brothers in the community allow to take over them and the hate that they allow to come to light, you know, and also where the, you know, where that hate might stem from, you know, a lot of the people that I knew that I grew up with, they felt that they were um, severely without and they felt that they wasn't being heard. And so that not being heard 
created a lot of hate and resentment for other people. And so they pretty much reflected, they ref, you know, reflected that hate towards like people who may have had an issue with, you know, and the people that they had an issue with went through the same situation. So that's how it created such a negative environment, you know? So that's why, um, that, that was one of my, that was like the first part. So my first favorite verse right there. And so, um, my second favorite was, um, like the last part of my last verse. <clears throat> and I said, okay, I see you need the money. Yes, you want the power. But all you niggas killing for it, y'all some fucking cowards. Because it ain't worth it if a brother dying every hour. If Brenda and the baby gone before the baby shower. Because they ain't waking up. And the reason why I put it like that is because that's just me saying, like, look. Like, I understand where y'all coming from. I come from the same environment. I come from the same place that y'all were, you know, we grew up in the same area, same neighborhoods, around the same type of people. Trust me, like I get it, I get where you're coming from. I know where that mindset stems from, right? But then there's a there's a difference. There's never, I always feel there's never a need to take someone's life because you feel you're without in any way. Because the hate that you're choosing to feel, that you're feeling, not choosing to feel, the hate that you feel for the world, you're trying to take that out on someone else and vice versa. So that's why I included that um, if Brenda and her baby gone before the baby shower, because I took that, kind of flipped that because of one of Tupac's, you know, best songs, Brenda, you know, Brenda got a baby. Okay. And so that's such an important, like, that's such an important bar for me. Because that story has happened many times in history, in my community, in the communities of a lot of um, a lot of areas in, in the United States. That has happened like all over the world. Like people have been taken from this earth unwillingly, you know, because of violence that could have been stopped early, that could have been controlled if people would literally just wake up to the situation that they're in, you know. So that's why those, those, so those are just two of my favorite uh, parts of the song. These lyrics are direct, are, are raw, are true, and are a reminder that that this is happening and that it's it's better when you're conscious about it. It's better when you when you can look at, at what's going on and reflect on it and see what you can start doing from your community from your house like in your family exactly. how, how you can have conversations that that make people find other ways to leave a lot of people they may not know you know the small things can impact someone in a very big way like if you would just you know talk to someone you you see they're upset you see they're angry you know just yeah. talk with them and then you know and that will help them out of whatever situation they're dealing with. Yeah. But what really gets me is um, the people who have the power to enact change, who's, you know, they're just, for some reason, you know, they, they may, they're choosing not to. Yeah. That's just, that's, that just gives us a bigger, you know, reason to join together and show that we're united, not separated, you know? Exactly. Yes, absolutely. This is true here in, I think, around the world, right? So it's a very, it's a very global uh, song. It's a very global story. Um, and a lot of people I know will feel connected to this. Um, and this is the magic of, of music, right? Um, that it connects people, that it makes people um, think and reflect and feel in it makes you have aha moments and at some point. It gives you like a sense yeah. of, like, I get it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like music, that's what, that's what one of the beauties of music is. You know, there's a reason why everybody can connect to music, you know? Mm -hmm. Like music is an easy escape for people, you know? That, it was definitely an escape for me when I was stressed out, when I was um, in a bad situation or I had a very negative mindset, no matter what the situation was. I'd always escape with the music. You know, the music was, was always an outlet for me. 
you know, whether it be creating or even just listening and, and shutting out the entire world, you know? And um, that's why it's like, um have to bring this back. That's why it's important for artists like myself, artists who, who will be in a better position to really lead through their content. You know what I'm saying? Show these people, show these children, show these kids that they have someone who came from their environment that they know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? That I've been in your shoes, but we can we can change. You know what I'm saying? Like we can yeah. change. If I can change, then I know anybody can change. Yeah. And that's beautiful because then they can look up to you and see that there are options, right? That there are options and different ways to walk through your life. So that's that's a great a great thing to do uh, through your music. Well, Ethan, tell us how was your experience recording at Minted Studios with Josh? Man, yo, Josh is the man. Like he is awesome. Um, out of all the experiences that I've had personally recording with um, with anybody or uh, being in the studio with anyone, Josh sets the tone for uh, a certain level of professionalism that an uh, engineer or producer should have. He knows what sounds good. He has a great ear for music and he's very talented himself. And so if he if he if he needs to tell you like look maybe, you know maybe hit that note a little different or um you know raise your tone um or you know switch the bar a little bit he knows and like i've trusted him the second like i touched down in mixed studios like i trusted exactly his direction where he wanted to go where he wanted to you know take the the music and you know being with josh um it's just been such an awesome experience i'm happy that that your experience with josh has been great um and i'm happy that you released your song as i have said before i know people's gonna love it i totally invite everybody to go listen to waking up by ethan hicks i want to thank you natalie again for allowing me to you know have this opportunity this is um this is my first interview like ever so this is just such a great experience being able to talk with you and 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 work with josh from mix it well i'm honored to make this your first interview i know there are many more to come please let people know where they can find you in social media everybody um once again my name is ethan hicks you can uh, follow me on instagram at e-t-h-a-n H-I-C-K-Z on Instagram. Um, waking Up, my first official single. It is now out on all platforms. Everybody stay positive, stay blessed, and um, have a great day and, and stream Waking Up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ethan. Well, now you know, go follow Ethan, go listen to Waking Up. And we'll see you in the next Let's Meet at Home.